So today we're going for a fantastic walk around one of London's most iconic and storied areas. I mean, so many stories here, we'll only just skim across the surface of its many, of its great history, its rich history, some terrible stories, some amazing stories, and a couple of incredible historical locations which you may not necessarily instantly associate with the area that we walk around today, which is Whitechapel. Whitechapel, it's the byword for the East End. Sometimes I find that people are stretching the definition of East London further north and further east as it's become more fashionable. But this, this is the East End with all that that brings with it. And it's also a really important part of my London. This is really my first London because I studied down here at what is today London Metropolitan University. But when I was here, it was City of London Polytechnic. And here in Old Castle Street, that's Calcutta House, and that was where I spent three amazing years. Now, somewhere here, opposite Old Gate East Station, there was the Red Lion Pub, which is a famous old boozer frequented by the legendary highwayman Dick Turpin, which is where one of, uh, one of the, his most sort of famous incidents took place after he had stolen a horse from a farmer near Epping called White Stocking and he stabled it at the Red Lion. When he came to collect the horse with the, uh, with the other notorious highwayman, Tom King, the constables arrived and Turpin shouted to King, shoot and Tom or they'll take us. And in the confusion, Dick Turpin accidentally shot his fellow highwayman, Tom King, instead. I don't know what happened after that, actually. That's not in the version of the story that I've got. But apparently behind the bar of the pub, they had a plaque with a picture showing that incident. And they also had the key to the stable where white stocking was kept. I wonder if the red line actually does exist further east. I've just taken that one uh, exit, or there's two exits of Oldgate East has been the location of the, uh, of the red line. I think it is. Anyway. Maybe we'll find, that's one of the things maybe we'll discover on the walk. But the first proper location I really want to get to is a recently discovered Elizabethan theatre. I know, who thought? Here, Whitechapel theatres. Of course there would be, wouldn't it? Because it's outside of the city of London where you could kind of do what you want. Hence the famous Globe Theatre is on the south bank of the Thames. And there was another place called The Theatre up there in Shoreditch. That has been marked, but there's one here that um, I think was only recently discovered when they were doing some building work, just around the corner. Change really messes with your mental map, doesn't it? Is this where Tubby Isaacs was? It probably wasn't, was it? it or what? I, I'm really confused. This is the corner, it should be the corner of Goulston Street. And I've, Tubby Isaacs was a legendary shellfish seafood bar and uh, I used to get cockles from there, been here for a long time. That fast food bar seems to be parked, no, it was over this side. Maybe it's a completely different street. Maybe we'll find it later. So a gentleman just informed me that that was indeed the site of Tubby Isaacs over there. That was there until about 10 years ago when he passed away. So my mental map wasn't completely wrong. Goulston Street here was the site of a, of a terrible rocket bomb attack in 1944. A German rocket bomb landed here, killing 23 people. And then after the war, they swept away many of the little alleyways and courts that led off this street to create the street scene that you see here today with these big blocky buildings. So I think this sparkling new building here might be on the site of the old Boar's Head Theatre. Maybe it was the excavations on this uh, development that led to its discovery. And it was built in 1598 and a number of the, the great playwrights of the age performed their works there, such as Thomas Middleton. I'm not sure whether Shakespeare performed here or not, but and now it's uh, whatever this is. This is Middlesex Street which was once uh, Petticoat Lane. It was the original Petticoat Lane market, which was a Sunday market. Originally it was sort of secondhand stuff, I believe, but then it became known for other things, particularly known for like bed sheets and things. I remember when I first came up here, 
89, you have the guys stood in their vans doing the, the, you know, the traditional old market call. So the signage here tells us that Petticoat Lane Market was established in 1650. The book I'm using actually for a lot of my information is called The Face of London by Harold P. Clun that was originally published I think in 69. Um, he only says it had been here 100 years but never mind. They changed the name in 1846 to Middlesex Street. I don't know why but everyone carried on calling it Petticoat Lane. If you're wondering why it's so quiet, it's actually Christmas Eve today and it's a Saturday. So it's the Saturday before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Hence the uh, complete absence of people. And you can see here how we're intersecting with the walk around the city churches just the other week. That's Houndsditch down there. The Bell Pub over there, which is a foreshadowing of where we will most likely end our walk today. I say most likely because you never really know, do you? At the Whitechapel Bell Foundry. And this is Stripe Street here, spelt with a Y, named after the great historian and antiquary, John Stripe, who published his survey of London in 1720 and he actually wrote about this area. So I'm not sure if he lived here, but he certainly wrote about Petticoat Lane. So Stripe records in his survey of 1720 how Petticoat Lane was bounded by, by hedgerows and elm trees on either side of Petticoat Lane with pleasant fields stretching that afforded country walks to the extent that city gentlemen would build their houses here, which is an interesting vision when you see it today. And now we turn into Wentworth Street, which is also home to a market, but the Wentworth Street market is more of a daily market. There used to be great food down here. I haven't been down Wentworth Street during the day. Actually, I have a couple of years ago doing my Sabod walk, the Austerlitz walk, which I will link to below when we cut through here. Of course, this is the heart of the Jewish East End. And Clun, writing in the 60s, notes that even at that point still, this was still considered a Jewish quarter, the heart of, of Jewish London at that point. It must have changed not long after that. I thought that change had happened in the 1930s with the slum clearances. And of course, people were living in very overcrowded, cramped conditions, much like a lot of people still are today, actually, working in the textile industry and in tailoring and dressmaking, all those kind of trades. So people would, have been, people would have been quite poor, working really hard, really long hours. Of course, at the turn of the 20th century, end of the 19th century, early 20th century, that's when there was a lot of organising to try and help the kind of poor Jewish textile workers to improve their conditions and there were a number of kind of notable strikes and collective actions if you like that partly that were led by a German guy called Rudolf Rocker. Adam Kossoff made a wonderful documentary about Rudolf Rocker called um, The Anarchist Rabbi. Um, Adam himself comes from a, a famous family associated with this area, Kossoff's of Kossoff's, Kossoff's Bakery. And I think the first Kossoff's was in Arnold Circus. We won't be going there today. But there was a Kossoff's down here in Middlesex Street. I don't know, it might have reopened or never closed perhaps. Actually, when I was a student, there was a great kind of like Jewish deli cafe over here. Where I used to come and get salt beef bagels as well. I brought my wife here in, uh, would have been what, in 97, 98, so it seems to have gone. Now I know at this point some of you are screaming at your computer saying what about the Whitechapel murders, the notorious Whitechapel murders that later on came to be attributed to uh, Jack the Ripper. And of course we will, um, we will talk about that at some point, not in massive detail, that's not really my thing. <laughs> it's a bit gory. Also, it is Christmas, right? Who wants to really dig into that at Christmas? But it is part of the story of this area and it's also an important key moment in the development of this area and what happened after those murders in 1888. But we'll talk about that further up here. Anne's place over there is kind of 
a good illustration of the kind of little courts and alleyways that proliferated around this area once upon a time until they were cleared away after the war. Really, I intended the focus of this walk to be on the other side of Whitechapel High Street, which is where we're going to go now, actually. So anything I miss out on this north side of Whitechapel High Street, we'll pick up in another video, because there's so much in this area, you kind of have to break it down into parts. So we're actually, we're going to go down Commercial Street Maybe we won't get to, I don't know if we will get to Brick Lane or not. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I've got a few priorities on this side. Brick Lane deserves a video all of its own, doesn't it really? With what's happening there, with the Truman Brewery and all that. We're now on Commercial Street and over there we have the famous Toynbee Hall, which was set up in the late 19th century by social reformers interested in trying to improve the conditions of the, of the poor people of the area. Apparently it was modelled on an Oxford college and provided education and, and other kind of local resources to people here. It's also where, interestingly, I mean, it's famous really for its association with Mahatma Gandhi, who visited the East End to see the conditions of the poor textile workers here, and he gave a speech here. I think this is where he, uh, when asked about what he thought of British civilization, said he thought it would be a good idea. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got that wrong or not. Another interesting association with Toynbee Hall is it's where John Profumo came uh, after the scandal of the Profumo affair, which then he brought down the government, caused all sorts of all sorts of hullabaloo. He came here and worked, I think basically as a cleaner here, to try and sort of redeem himself. One of Queen Elizabeth I's favourites, the Earl of Essex, had a grand mansion here. In fact, it was regarded as a palace. And there was another house here where Queen Elizabeth I used to stay, around the vicinity of Commercial Street. Now, there was an Essex Street here that Clum mentions, but it's not on the map anymore. So it shows you the kind of degrees of change that went on in this area. Those two grand houses were both demolished at the same time when they developed Commercial Street into what it is today, a big wide road, with kind of warehouses and sort of industrial buildings. Obviously, there's been buildings built on the sites of those buildings as well, bearing in mind that this area was really heavily bombed. I'll link below to my video of a walk around uh, Norton Folgate, which comes down to Commercial Street around Spitalfields Market. So that covers that part of the area. So we've gone in a loop around the block and we're back at Oldgate East Station and we're going to cross over and go south of Whitechapel High Street. There's a couple of real treasures down here. This is Lehman Street, and I came down here the other night with my son, Oliver, who you'll remember from the Berlin video. And I couldn't believe the change. It's completely been transformed since I first came here in the late 80s, early 90s. This is pretty much unrecognisable. All these buildings here are new. Before it was developed, this area here south of uh, Whitechapel Road was, was known as Goodman's Fields. These are some interesting looking buildings here in East Tenter Street. I remember a friend told me uh, a few years ago when we were doing a walk around the East End that the name Tenter, there's the Tenter Grounds as well on the other side of Whitechapel High Street, that it comes from the, the fields where the textile workers would stretch out their, their cloths, their dyed cloths to dry and they would hang them on tenter hooks. And that's where the name comes from. Tenter Street, Tenter Ground, and also where the expression to be on tenter hooks comes from. That could be a piece of beautiful nonsense, couldn't it? But... And here in Ailey Street, we have a real gem, St. George's German Lutheran Church, which opened in 1762 and was restored uh, in 2004. And it's a really beautiful church. I came here the other night with, uh, with my son Oliver to see a talk by the brilliant, wonderful Will Self talking about W.G. Sabold, which was incredible. Any chance you get to go and see Will Self talk, doesn't matter what it's about, I highly recommend 
going to see him is brilliant. And obviously what was particularly poignant here is, and I think the, 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 the reason the subject was chosen is because that Sebold walked through the East End when he was researching his book, Austerlitz. I retraced the steps of those walks from notes given by the poet Stephen Watts, who had led Sebold on those walks. And he then uh, took Ian Sinclair on those walks and Ian passed on the route to me. And I did it with my friend, the great artist, Bob and Roberta Smith. I noticed that Stephen Watts was in the audience the other night. It's a really magnificent evening. We've got the name recorded here on this brand new development. And here we have Commercial Road which according to Ed Glynner is the longest road in East London. And it was built in 1800 or 1803, I've seen both dates, to link the docks, the new docks to the city, to bring the goods unloaded there into the heart of London. This is White Church Lane, which must be a reference to the original White Chapel, which, gives, which gave its name to White Chapel, of course. It was a church attached to the nunnery of St. Clair that had white walls. So it's a very literal name, White Chapel. It's literally a white chapel. Here we have White Church Passage. It's on the other side of the street there. And we have so much stuff to deal with. That's a whole video in its own right. Brick Lane, the White Chapel Gallery, the White Chapel Murders, all that business. That's all that's over there, so we'll do that another day. We've got a, a cracking, two cracking sites to show you, two really cracking sites. So this is Altab Alley Park, formerly St Mary's Park, and it is the site of the original 14th century white church, the original white chapel. You can see a few remains, there's a couple of graves that are still left here. And this is the site of that church that gave the area its name. Altab Ali was um, a young 25-year-old Bangladeshi textile worker who was murdered in a racist attack in 1978. John Stripe records how Whitechapel Road was one of the finest roads of London, leading east out into Essex. In fact, he calls it the Essex Road, the road to Essex, with many fine inns along its way to greet the weary traveller. So this was the site of the Whitechapel Bell Foundry, established in 1570. Not on this site, it was on this site for 250 years before it closed in 2017. It was where many, many church bells uh, were cast. The most famous, of course, well, actually I say the most famous. If you can hear the bells of Big Ben, this is where that bell was recast here. You hear that's the famous sound of Big Ben. That bell was made on this site. How could they allow it to close? From my American viewers, this is where the Liberty Bell was cast. My favourite association, though, of this site is the way it makes an appearance in the Ben Aranovich novel, the Peter Grant River, Rivers of London series, lies sleeping, and this is where they cast a magic bell using bricks from old Roman London. Um, it's a beautiful resonant, there you go, see, a bit of a, what would you call that, resonant? It's a resonant location anyway that still speaks to us today. I'm not sure what the future of the site will be. I think there's talk of a boutique hotel or something like that on this site here. The Whitechapel Bell Foundry here, the junction anyway of Plumbers Row and Whitechapel High Street or Whitechapel Road is also the site of the Whitechapel Fort, one of the civil war defences built to protect London from the Royalists. It's not known exactly where it is. This site here, the Bell Foundry, there were some archaeological excavations which uncovered the trenches that they reckon marked the southern end of the fort that was here that stood near a windmill that was near the church. There is another fort in the area though, and that is where our walk will end, a much grander, larger fort whose uh, existence was doubted for many years. But thanks to this article in London Archaeologist, I'm not saying they've completely cleared it up, but uh, they've shared further light.
tower house here it was originally built as Roughton House in the late 19th century and it was to provide decent low cost accommodation to single men, to working class men in the area. And this is the famous Tayab's restaurant in Fieldgate Street, established in 1972 and so it's one of the longest continuously kind of run Indian restaurants in London and it is really magnificent. I had a, a great meal there earlier in the year with some friends and it was a really cracking experience. Highly recommended Tayab's. So the final location on what is going to be the first of a few Whitechapel walks, isn't it? It's going to be a bit like the Soho series. Not quite like the City of London series, but it's going to take a few videos to cover all this. The last place I want to find is the site of the enormous, what they call the um, London Hospital Fort. Obviously it wouldn't have been called that at the time, wouldn't it? But there was another fort beyond the Whitechapel Fort that was, looks to be vast in the old etchings and it was somewhere near here, near the London Hospital. I think I know where. So Mount Terrace here stands on a visible kind of bit of rising ground, raised earth that was once a huge earthwork that had kind of escaped the attention of, of relatively modern chroniclers of the Civil War defences until recent studies. Noticed it in, in one of the uh, engravings by Holler of his Panorama of London. There was this enormous kind of mound here, this fortification, an earthwork beyond the Whitechapel fort. It, it, it crops up in uh, a planning application, would you believe, submitted by Sir Christopher Wren, who describes a massive earthwork and also an ambassador to London, again, describes it as being like a military citadel that had been established by General Fairfax. The mount, or the mound, was a, was a feature in, in this part of London right into the 19th century when it was finally cleared away. But you can still see the rising grounds here on the corner of New Road and Whitechapel Road and where Mount Terrace keeps the name alive. I will link below to the walk I did uh, along the lines of communication, along the Civil War forts through Islington. It kind of, and the, this is, well, this is, they start in Wapping on this side, on the east side, pass through here, up Brick Lane and onwards. And I will have to do, maybe I'll do this section of the walk maybe next time, maybe that can be the thing that links it together, I don't know. Well, thank you for joining me on that, um, oh, yeah. that fantastic walk through just a portion of the history and the stories resonating through the pavements of, of one of the most iconic areas of London, one of London's truly great districts of Whitechapel. And this series will run. I think I'm going to need at least one more, if not two more videos to kind of really drill down into it. Go into the comments. There'll be some fantastic comments down there from people with their, with their memories and their stories and the list of my omissions. But, you know, be aware, I am going to come back and do the other side of uh, Whitechapel High Street. I'm going to probably do another video on the other bit down there with Wilton's Music Hall and all that kind of jazz. Take care of yourself. I hope you have a great midwinter feast season and a wonderful new year whatever you do however you celebrate and as I always like to say I look forward to seeing you on the next walk wherever that may be and thank you so much for all your support in 2022 and we're gonna have an incredible year in 2023 even better than 2022 thank you take care happy new year